This was the first uh, video conference distance learning lesson that, that was conducted directly from uh, the Cleveland Museum of Natural History, and you're the first class to be a part of it. The first one that went to the moon was Apollo 11. Uh, when Apollo 11 went, many of the systems had never been tried before. This engine that I talked about over here had never fired in space. This is the first time that we actually lose it in space. But we had enough confidence that the life of the human beings could be entrusted to something that would destroy itself but it destroyed itself in a very controlled fashion. So Apollo 11 went really without any problem at all. It was an unusually wonderful and beautiful uh, uh, mission. Apollo 12 came up just a half year later. And Apollo 12, when it came off the, the launch uh, pad, was struck by lightning. And all of the instrumentation went absolutely blank. Uh, I was at that point at uh, Houston uh, in the control area. There's a control center that you normally have seen and there's a technical support area that's behind the control center. I was in the technical support area and we were watching the propulsion systems there and when the takeoff occurred everything looked fine and all of a sudden every bit of instrumentation went blank. But the engines got fired. So the mission controllers allowed the engines to continue to fire, eventually re-established all the instrumentation, and although lightning had taken out the transmissions at that point, much like what happened today, I guess, with our transmission, I presume it wasn't lightning, but it may have been. Uh, but in, in any event, uh, the, the uh, mission continued to go, and from there on, Apollo 12 was flawless and landed fine. Apollo 13, you probably have all seen the movie. But basically what happened there is that two-thirds the way to the moon, an oxygen tank exploded, it had a fire in it, it overpressurized, exploded, came apart, and disabled the, what's called the service module, namely a part of the vehicle. And all we could do is to continue to float out into space toward the moon, but could no longer afford to land because the landing stage was the only thing that could bring them back. Had the landing stage not been used to bring them back, they would have just continued in space and would have gone out and gone way past the moon and they would have been lost forever. They eventually would have run out of oxygen and all the astronauts would have died. Well, you know the ending to that story. Uh, my part in it was actually very exciting because the landing stage, the engine that I just showed you earlier, had to be used to bring the people back. The main firing of that engine took place behind the moon and when a vehicle is behind the moon, not only is it that you can't see it, but you can't communicate with it. So you don't know what is happening. And we had calculated that if the engine fired right, that the communication would be re-established at a certain time. We calculated that down to a fraction of a second. But if it came out two seconds too early, then they would go around the moon and miss the Earth coming back. And if it came out about two seconds too late, they would have missed the moon, missed the Earth the other way and gone by the Earth and would never have landed on the Earth. But it turns out that when that second came up, it was exact the vehicle came out from behind the moon, and at that point we all knew that our engine had done its job and the astronauts would be back safe. And they did land safe. Beyond that, the Apollo program had four more missions uh, up to Apollo 17. They all went without any problem at all. Now, what happened when the whole thing was through? 
Well, first of all, a lot of technology to involve that. The fact that you have the kind of 3D transmissions that you have today, the fact that you have computers like you have today, to a great degree, came out of the beginnings out of that program. The technology developed there, in fact, has been applied very, very widely. And then finally to me, it was a great adventure, it was an adventure of a lifetime. It's an adventure that some engineers, in fact, have experienced, some with the moon, some other ways. And I hope that some of you will think of having an adventure somewhat like this yourselves. And I think you all ready to do that. Just be sure to pay attention to Mr. Moore in the back. Okay, now at this point I'd like to go ahead and uh, open it to any questions. Yes, we've had some rockets go off. I can tell you that when they're small, they don't do too much damage. But some of my larger ones have go off. And uh, those are, those are spectacular. Very spectacular.